Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. Say what, say what, say what. It's the scenario. Bo knows this and a Bo knows that. But Bo don't know Jack because Bo can't rap. If y'all didn't know, I'm an old school hip hop kind of guy. Tonight, we're going to have a good time. This is Monday Night Sales Match. We're going to start in exactly three minutes. And um, we're going to talk about something interesting tonight. To irritate or to agitate? That is the question. To be or not to be? That is the question. This is Monday Night Sales Mastery. Between now and 9.30, by 9.30 p.m., you're going to learn something that's going to help you to sell yourself and your services better than you ever have before. And this is not what I hope to accomplish. This is what I know will be true. What's up, Miss Vivian? How you doing, Sister Julie? Good. How you doing? In 30 minutes, we're going to get it in. And we're going to start in exactly two minutes, but it's going to be just 30 minutes of sales training designed to help you to sell yourself and your services immediately. That's the goal. I come here on Monday nights to give you something that's going to help you to sell better right away. Right away. Something that you're going to learn tonight that's going to help you to sell better tomorrow. To be or not to be? We got two minutes to go. That is the question. Are you going to do it or not? Is it going to be easy or hard? To be or not to be is the question. So we're going to get it in. Now, why would I do this? It's 8.59, y'all. Almost time. We're going to start on the dot. That gives me a chance to get something else here. <clears throat> Give me a chance to grab my books. <laughs> Just in case anybody wants to see them. I want to have them here handy. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. You know, I got asked a great question. Do you think, Brian, Brian, do you think people that come to your free stuff, do you think they can get enough to, by just coming to your free stuff to sell better? And the answer is yes. You can get enough by just coming to the free stuff. Johnetta, what's up, girl? How you doing? It's 9 o'clock. It's time to get it started. 9 p.m. Monday Night Sales Master. We start on time and we're going to finish on time. What's up, Anthony? We're going to go for 30 minutes tonight. Now, first off, what am I doing? What are we doing here? What is this about Monday Night Sales Mastery? I believe that I am uniquely gifted, skilled, skilled and prepared to teach people how to sell better. I've made thousands of sales in my life and I've missed thousands of them. I've read more than 700 books on how to sell. I've trained thousands of people on how to sell. I've done thousands of presentations and all those things together within my head, I've learned and developed some selling your services philosophies, some philosophies, some tips and tactics. And I put a lot of these things into my regular trail sales training company. I own two companies. One is called the um, Very Personal Sales Coaching. That's where I do my one-on-one -on -one sales coaching. That's the umbrella I sell my books and my workshops under. And I also have the Selling Your Services Academy. That's weekly sales training that takes place each Wednesday night at 9 p.m. where I deep dive into a topic. Tonight is not going to be a deep dive, but every one of you guys will be better at selling yourself when I'm done than you were before I started. So let's just get right into it. It's already 9.01. We done wasted a whole minute. Why should you listen to me? Because I know what I'm talking about. I am the author of The Shortcut. The Shortcut. The fastest route to selling your services better than you ever had before so you can earn more money than ever before. That's the book that teaches you just what to do. It's basically a four to six week program. If you just do what it says do, you'll earn significantly more money and within about a month, month and a half. Just do what it says do. And I also wrote Asking for the Money, How Anyone Can Close More Sales, Even You. This book is just straight up how to close the sale, how to ask for the money, and how to overcome objections. That's available to you as well. And I even have an amazing children's book 
or not just for children's book called Why Rhinos Make Great Salespeople, featuring Mr. Randall the Rhino. I happen to be the author of those three books. I've also written another book, a workshop book that's available as well. So anyway, <clears throat> let's get to it. You are an entrepreneur. You have a business and you want in clients. You want people to buy your stuff. How do you get them to do it? How do you get people to buy your stuff? Do you ask them to buy? Do you beg them to buy? Do you irritate them or do you agitate them? Irritate them, getting on their nerves, making their process unpleasant, making it difficult for them to do business with you. Or do you agitate them? You know, in your washing machine, there's a thing right in the middle of it called an agitator. And what it does is it shakes up the clothes so that the detergent can do its job and clean your clothes. It does a good thing. It agitates them so that it can become clean. Imagine someone, you guys have seen this before too. Someone says, hey, um, I want you to um, uh, work with me. What do you mean? I have a business. Okay, great. What's your business? Here, go to my website and uh, go to the screen here and then sign up under my website and then you'll see all my stuff. Oh my gosh. I ask you, what do you do? And you give me a homework assignment. That's irritating. How about this? Hey, go to my YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Who are you? I don't even know anything about you. Why would I do that? Just go to my YouTube channel, please. How about this? You know, we family. You're supposed to support each other. Buy my stuff because we family. I make this stuff right here. Buy my stuff because we family. Wait, wait, wait. What do I get out of this? Is it going to help me? Is it any good? You don't need to worry about that. You just be family. All these things are irritating. And some of you guys have been victims of these things as well. Irritating instead of helping them to buy. Is it easy for someone to buy from you? Is it easy for someone to hire you? Okay, good. I'll work, I'll work with you. Okay, great. I'm going to send you this form. I need you to fill out this form first and then put your credit card information on there and then I'm going to run it. Whoa. Okay. Wait a minute. Make it easy for me. That's irritating. You know, there's a guy, I have several Facebook groups that I happen to be the um, uh, manager of. And there's this one guy, I never approve his posts. Never. Because he comes all the time, comes like every day. And his post is, please go to my YouTube page and subscribe. I need, um, I need a hundred more people to subscribe to my page. Well, so what? That's what you need. You didn't ask me what I need. You didn't give me anything. Who? What do I care how many subscribers you want or need for your YouTube page? That's your business. All of those things are irritating activities. And all those things happen when you are selling for your own reasons. When you're selling just for you. When you're selling just because you want the money. When you're selling just to see what you could get out of it. When you're selling from the me perspective instead of from the them perspective. All those things are irritating. And I want you to stop doing that. I want you to work on agitating, whereas you work towards motivating them, where you clearly articulate the benefits of what you have to offer, where you encourage them, where you sell the benefits of what you have to offer, where you make it easy for them to do business with you. There's a difference. Think about your selling process. Can someone hire you? Can someone buy from you? And the process is smooth. Yeah, Vivian says it rubs someone the wrong way. She's doing great, great, great. Let's get it started. <laughs> yes, it does rub people the wrong way when you sell like that. Or can you make it easy for them? Here's one simple way. I'm going to tell you a quick Aesop fable, very quick Aesop fable. The story is called Buridan's Ass. Buridan's Ass. Burden's donkey. And it's about this donkey, this ass that starves himself to death while standing between two huge stacks of hay because he can't make up his mind which stack is better to eat from. So he stands there frustrated and he starves to death. When you present your stuff, when you market your stuff and you don't formally and specifically ask for the business, you are putting your potential clients in the position of burden's ass, where you frustrate them. You frustrate them because they're not sure what to do. What you should be doing, all of you guys will learn to close better if you'll just do this one thing, ask for what you want. 
go to my website, do this right here. Would you buy something for me? Would you hire me? Would you give my stuff a try? That's the way I prefer that you ask. Will you give me a try? Will you give my thing a try? Will you give my service a try? Is there a low risk way for your potential clients to try you out? Do you offer anything for free? Do you offer anything for low cost where they can get a taste test of the value of what you have to offer before they invest the bigger money? It's all a system, making it easy for them to try you. By the way, there's another selling tip. If anybody spends $1 with you, if they buy anything that you have, they spend any money with you at all, it becomes easier for them to spend money with you again. So don't sweat the big contract up front. Don't sweat that right there. Make it easy for them to invest a little bit of money and learn more and more about yourself. Now, if you offer something that doesn't cost them so much money, what you offer them has to be still, it still has to be of value to them. It still has to be good for them. It still has to help them in some way. They have to perceive that the value they got from whatever you're offering is way more money than what they paid. And that's going to be the case for your whole business career. All your clients have to believe they're getting more than what they're paying for. They have to believe that they're getting a value. If they think your stuff is worth $1,000, but you charge them $500 for it, what a great deal. But if they think your stuff is worth $500 and you charge $1,000, that's not a good deal at all. Don't worry about the equity of it. Your clients need to believe that they are trading their little pile of money for your great big pile of benefits. Can I get an amen? Amen. So to irritate or agitate, I want you to examine how you offer your stuff. Is it easy for them to stuff, give your stuff a try? Or do you agitate? Do you motivate them to try your stuff? And very, very important under motivating, asking specifically what you want. By you asking them to give your stuff a try, it's the equivalent of you taking Burden's ass by the arm reins and leading to him to one stack so he can eat. You lead him so that they can eat. Now, I also want to cover a selling ideology, a selling way of thinking. Monday Night Sales Mastery, I come here with the express purpose of giving you something that's going to help you to sell better tomorrow. That's my goal. That's my plan. I want to teach you something tonight that's going to help you to sell better tomorrow. Now, a selling ideology. In my, in my practice, I teach four different selling ideologies, four different selling methodologies. One of them is features and benefit selling. One of them is consultative selling. I also teach Socratic selling. And I teach hurt and rescue selling. Now, tonight, we're going to focus on consultative selling selling exclusively. What is consultative selling? Consultative selling is where you position yourself where you're on the same side of the table as the client. Your job as a consultative salesperson is to discover what your client's desired goal is as early as you want, early as you can. Discovering what it is that your clients would like to see happen. For example, your clients say, I want to um, I want to lose 25 pounds over the next three months. Now, the consultative salesperson would be you wanting to lose 25 pounds. I also want you to lose 25 pounds. So the consultative salesperson, you make your client's goal your goal. And you guys both work together kind of shoulder to shoulder to make that same thing happen. It's not you sitting across the table as the consultant. You're sitting on the same title side of the table going for the same goal. That's the consultative model, the way they think. They, they, their job is to discover what is the client's desired outcome. One of the ways you can do that, one of the ways I like to do that, is early in the process, I ask my client, what do you, what do you believe would be the very best thing that can happen out of us meeting here tonight or out of us talking about this right now? What's the best thing that can happen out of our time? What's the best thing that can happen out of you buying from me or going through some of my stuff? And whatever they say that they want to have happen, whatever they can imagine as the best thing that can happen, whatever it is they say, whatever they want to have happen, that's what I want to have happen too. Or if you're selling something where you're consulting or a service, what was it that you would love to see happen as a result of you and I talking? 
if I'm in the landscaping business, they might say something like, well, the best thing I can imagine is if you take care of my lawn like it was your own and you make my lawn look beautiful every week. I don't have to worry about you. You don't cause me problems and it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg and part of a hip and it's easy to work with you. Those are the things that you're wanting, ma'am. That's what I want too. I want to take care of your lawn as if it was my own. I won't cause you a lot of problems. I'm going to not charge you an arm and leg and part of the hip and you're not going to have to worry about me adding to your woes. That's the consultative selling model where you discover what your clients want to have happen and you work, work, make their goal your goal as well. Does that make any sense to anybody? Now, I've been talking for 13 minutes. Has anyone already gotten some value out of our time talking? Have you already gotten any value? If anyone's gotten any value already, hashtag value, hashtag value. Underneath my face and chest, you see a Calendly link. Calendly.com forward slash BK McNeil. That's up there for a reason. The reason why that's up there is if you haven't before or if you haven't in a while, I offer a free selling your services consultation, a one-on-one -on -one consultation between you and I. It typically lasts 15, 20 minutes time. We'll do it by phone. But that Calendly link is where you can go and schedule yourself to do a one-on-one -on -one selling your services consultation with me. Now, what does it cost? It's free to do that. But why would I do that? Because I have testimonial after testimonial that you can gain something within 15 to 20 minutes with me that's going to help you to sell better. What it will cost you is two things. It'll cost you the courage to go to that link and schedule. You've got to be a little bit courageous there. And the other thing that costs you is the time that it takes to do it. You have to show your butt up on time that you schedule. Monica says, yes, but how does that work? Offering products online. Value. How does what work offering products online? Making it easy for them to try you out? Here's how it works. If you don't have anything that you can give for free, you can, um, you can offer them smaller packages of your products to try it out. Call it a trial package or smaller doses, try it out before you invest a bigger amount. Or you can offer um, a discount as a trial period. Um, for example, if you only have big jars of stuff to sell, for example, and you don't want to break them up into smaller jars, um, first time buyers program, first time trying it out program, it's normally $25. If this is your first time trying me out, um, I might offer it to you for 20 or 18 or 17.95 just to incent them. There's a concept called the greatest management principle, normally shortened to GMP. Whatever gets rewarded gets done. If you can figure out a way to reward your clients for trying out your products, that might be a good way of thinking about how can I reward them for trying out my products? Thank you, Tony, for the value. Thank you, Ms. Vivian. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Monica. And uh, I do have some time, it's 9.15 already. <laughs> So I'm willing to answer some questions. Irritate or agitate and the consultative selling model. I know I'm, I mentioned a few minutes ago the four models I focus on teaching. The first one is called features and benefit selling, where you, where you help your clients understand this is what we have and the way it benefits you is this. This product, and this normally works really good, Monica, with product presentations, products, things. Features and benefits selling works with a product. This is what we have, and this is what it does, and the way it benefits you is this. Features and benefits models. Many, many great corporations were built on a features and benefits model. Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, Anthony, Anthony says I offered a complimentary getaway when they spend $100 with me. The only challenge with that offering a getaway is because you don't sell getaways you sell jewel pads. So the getaway to me is something that you incent people with after they're already a client. It's, it's not the same arena. A trip is not the same thing as your pads. It has to be something within, within what you offer. Because there's so many different things we could do in our businesses, but they got to be within your same arena. For example, I'm a sales coach, but I'm also a speaker, but I speak about sales. Now, if I'm a sales coach, but I speak about, I don't know, 
gardening, those things don't go together, even though I may know a lot about both of them, but they just don't go together. Um, so you could do it however you like, Anthony. The, I believe the incentive of a getaway works better with people that are already within your arena, that are already current clients of yours. But for someone that's never tried your stuff before and you want them to try it, it's got to be something that close to what you sell. That's my opinion. OK, and that's another thing, too, people. There's so many different things you can do, but it's got to be within your arena, within the stuff that you do. You want to become known for something. Do you want to be known for giving away getaways or do you want to be known for selling um, pads that make people um, not have stressful monthly cycles? What do you want to be known for? And there's a lot of value in being known for something. Once you're known for a thing, that opens up the world to you because now you can get a call from New York or California or Florida because they know what you do. Monica says, okay, so if you buy a T-shirt, you get a free keychain. Got it. See, now that to me is much better because it's closer to what she does. She offers T-shirts. I can see how a keychain can be paired with that easier, if that makes any sense. Yep. Uh, offer Now, that keychain's got to be a keychain that they want, too. It's got to be, it can't be, it can't look cheap. It's got to be something that they may want to have. For example, when I was uh, part of a company and I was kicking butt, I was one of the top salespeople every month and they had a sales contest. That's nice. one month they had a sales contest where the top salesperson that month got $500 worth of clothes, but they had to pick a store. And I pick a men's clothing store and they gave me $500 to shop at a men's clothing store. And I wanted to win that and I won. It was in a March. Okay, and then they ran the same contest again the next month, and I won it again. And I was rooting for them to win it a, to do it a third time, but they stopped. They ran another contest. The top salesperson that month got a a rental Cadillac for the month, so they would rent them a Cadillac for a month to drive on your sales car. That was a contest I wanted to win, and I won that too. But well, one of the contests they ran was the winner of this contest got a big screen TV. Now at the time, I already had four televisions. And I didn't want another television. That was not an incentive to me. Okay. I offer free samples first. Well, yes, I like your idea of your free samples, Anthony, but um, for your stuff is so good. My wife sings the praises of your stuff. I might even recommend that you don't do them free at first. Make them pay something. Make them pay shipping and handling. Okay. Or something. You can offer them the pads, but make them pay the shipping and handling. Because once they put any money, once they put any money in what they what you're offering, it's easier for them to invest in you again and again and again. If you buy a home, you get me to help you get you get me to help you. Now, I like that when you understand. That's Brenda Booker, but of course you understand. I like when you um, think about it that way, when you understand that you have to sell yourself first. For example, uh, there's three sales you got to make every day. You got to sell yourself to yourself that you're good and that you're worthy to the world, that you can do this work. But you also have to sell yourself to your marketplace, to the people that you serve. You got to every day, you got to resell that you're worth working with. So if Brenda's focused on, on selling herself and if a potential client buys into Brenda's expertise, OK, I believe in her and her expertise. Now, if I believe in her and her expertise, if I want her and her expertise, I can only get her and her expertise from her. So I can't shop around anymore. That's how you eliminate the competition by selling yourself first. And then the third sale you have to make every day is to the your loved ones or the people around you, or the people in your house. You have to sell them every day that you have their best interest in heart and that you're worth and you love them. I have to sell my wife every day that I love her and I'm worthy of her love of me. But you have to sell yourself to yourself every day. Uh, Cat Williams calls it sell yourself on your star player. You got to look at your star player. That's Cat Williams line. But you're selling yourself to yourself every day and you have to sell yourself to your marketplace. There was a great um, book uh, by, uh, I think it was Joe Girard called Selling You. How do you sell yourself to your marketplace? Selling you. So if you sell you, that eliminates competition. That makes sense, Anthony. I hope it does. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Sister Brenda, Rockstar Real Estate Agent. 
and she hashtags her all heart and no bull. <laughs> so today's topic is threefold. Three things I wanted to come here to talk about. I want to talk about irritate or agitate. Do you make it easy for them to work with you? Or do you mode, I mean, or do you make it hard for them to work with you? Or do you make it easy for them to work with you? Do you aggravate them to work with you? Or do you motivate them to work with you? It particularly bothers me when people beg for business. Come on, man, buy my stuff, beg my stuff. That's a bad selling modality. Okay. No one's gonna buy your stuff for your reasons. That is very selfish. Salespeople, and a lot of times unwittingly, we're we're selfish. I speak real, real fast on Mondays because I only do it in 30 minutes. Thank you, Anthony. Um, it does make sense. It's already 922, so I only have eight minutes left to go. I do want to encourage you. If you've not worked done with work with me before or it's been a while, go to my Calendly link forward slash uh, Calendly.com forward slash BK McNeil because I want to spend that time with you, that free selling your services consultation. I want to do it. Now, here's the other thing, too. I got time. I got seven more minutes. I'm going to teach you one more thing. <clears throat> Brenda, if I'm out talking to someone, how would I know if the person I'm talking to is a good referral for you? Monica, if I'm out talking to someone, how would I know if the person I'm talking to is a good referral for you? Miss Vivian, how would I know if someone I'm out talking to is a good referral for you? Anthony, if I'm out talking to someone, how would I know if the person I'm talking to is a good referral for you? That what I just asked is what's called the golden referral question. The golden referral question. How would I know if someone I'm talking to is a good referral for you, Brenda? Now, if I asked Brenda that in person or on the phone and she thought about it for a moment and then she answered, if she says, well, one thing is, uh, do they want to buy a home or sell a home? Can they qualify for a mortgage? Is it something they've been wanting to do for a while? Um, I don't know what she would say for her, but I'm just guessing some stuff that typical real estate agents would say. And she goes, well, if they say anything like that, or if they say they're frustrated with trying to buy a home or they're confused about the process, that's a good referral for me. And very often when they answer that question, the law of reciprocation kicks in and then they ask you back, well, how about for you? How would I know if someone I'm talking to is a good referral for you? That gives you a chance to tell your story. The golden referral question, I encourage you guys to incorporate that into your business life. Your job is to become very curious about other people. By the way, I got six more minutes. If you found value here tonight, there's probably somebody that you know. Now, the average American knows about 600 people, but there's probably somebody that you know that would really be benefited if they had a conversation with a sales coach. If they would really be benefited if they took part in these Monday night sales masteries. Now, you knowing that they or you believing that they will be benefited. And if you don't tell them about it, if you believe they will be benefited about an association with Monday Night Sales Mastery, if you believe they will be benefited greatly by scheduling their time on the um, on my calorie link for their free selling your services consultation, and you don't tell them about it, then you're committing a crime. And the crime that you're committing is what's called the sin of the desert. The sin of the desert is when you know where the water is but you won't tell anyone else. You're keeping the water and where the water is located to yourself. If you get value out of this and you don't tell anybody else about it, that's you keeping the water to yourself, which is the height of selfishness. And you're not a selfish person. Selfish doesn't win, right? I just shaved right before I came on here. That's why I've been scratching my face a lot. Normally on Monday nights, I write down six or seven things I want to cover, and I never get to cover them all. Tonight, I only wanted to cover three stanzas, and I finished early, so I got everything done. <laughs> I am Brian Keith McNeil. I'm not going to leave you yet. I got four more minutes. But uh, my company is called Very Personal Sales Coaching. One of my favorite parts of my life is my Wednesday night Selling Your Services Academy. The reason why I love the Selling Your Services Academy is I can give high levels of sales training affordably. Instead of having to pay my rate for one-on-one, -on -one, it's group sales training. It's every week. You don't have to come every Wednesday. I'm going to be there every Wednesday, but you don't have to come every Wednesday. Come often as you want. You can come every Wednesday if you want to, but the training's going on and it keeps you 
in a green and growing mode instead of a ripe and rotting mode. It keeps you getting input and regularly every week or often enough that you just, excuse me, keep yourself improving, keep yourself getting better. That's the selling. And if you want information on the Selling Your Services Academy, just let me know. Uh, again, I'm Brian Keith McNeil. I always enjoy my time with you guys. So it's 927. When I get done with you tonight, what am I going to do? I'm going to look at your comments and all that. I got blessed with a new grandbaby yesterday. I'm going to look at my grandbaby's pictures, talk to my daughter. I might go outside and have a cigar before bed tonight. I'm not sure, but I'm feeling great about it. I appreciate you guys for coming here. You honor me with your presence each Wednesday. I like that I'm starting to see some familiar faces on here. Um, I hope now, Anthony, uh, particularly you, Anthony Whitson, because I told you something today on tonight that was different than what your current plan was. So I hope it didn't throw you off. I just gave you my opinion. If your plan was working for you, if it is working for you, please continue. I suggested that the incentive of the weekend getaway is not a lure until they've already bought into what you and your what you do. It's a concept called bait and switch. You know, you know, the bait is the free getaway, and then we switch you to trying the pads. They don't go together. Okay, they don't go together. The bait and switch used to be getting TVs, uh, huge TVs for a hundred dollars, but then when you show up at the store, they don't have any more of them. So then they try to switch you to the five hundred dollar one. They bait you in and switch you to something else. It's just not a very, very good process. You don't sell getaways. You give those away. So I would suggest that your low price or your give giveaway has something to do, something that you sell. And I hope that made sense to you. You're always welcome for the nuggets, my brother. I give because I, I really believe that I am God's hands, feet, and legs on this earth when it comes to selling yourself and your services. And I believe if I did not give some stuff away, if I did not teach, if I did not share, I'm committing the crime of the sin of the desert. So, and if any one of you guys got some value out of this, my time was well served. I did what I was supposed to do. I did not let money keep me from blessing the world around me. This is something that I'm willing to do. And it's only in a 30 minute block and I'm willing to do it and share with the world. I am Brian Keith McNeil. Thank you very much.